This lesson is a third grade lesson. It's called Organic Forms. In this lesson, they're gonna use air dry clay. Uh, this is Crayola air dry clay. I know there's other brands out there. If you look on Amazon, there's other brands that are less expensive. You're welcome to experiment with those. I just know the quality of the Crayola works really well. Um, I'm gonna show you how to break it down for them most easily and then how we're gonna work with it. Um, ideally, we'd have real clay in the classrooms, but we're pretty limited with materials. We don't have a kiln, we don't have a way to do that. So this is our next best option and the most economical. Obviously, we'd love to work with, you know, colored like Sculpey type clays as well, but they're, they're pretty expensive. So this is the most economical way that I have found to do this project. So the clay comes like this um, in about five pound um, hunks. And then we're going to break it down for the students to use. I like to go ahead and pre-portion out the clay so that it's easy to hand out and quick once you get in the classroom. So to break it down, I just like to um, pull down the plastic. And then the easiest way to break this up is to actually use a piece of thread. And if you use thread, you can kind of cut right through it. And as you can see, I'm pulling down on the thread and it's gonna cut the clay right in half. And it's honestly the easiest way to break it down. So I like to do this and then I like to get, just keep breaking it down using the thread. If your thread breaks, just get another piece, but as it gets smaller, it cuts really easily. As you can see, it's really nice. The thread just slices right through it. So this will depend on your budget and how much clay you've allotted for your class. Um, I usually like to actually use a scale. You don't have to, you can just eyeball it. I do like to use a scale and get pretty, um, pretty accurate amounts. So ideally, you're gonna give each student about four ounces of clay. I wouldn't give them any less than that, or it's just really not enough to work with. So as you can see, this is a five ounce chunk of clay. Um, four to five ounces is probably what you want. Work with your head art docent and your budget and kind of decide how much clay you're gonna buy. Um, I do know we have larger budgets um, than we did a couple years ago, so you might be able to account for a little bit more clay. But I would really not give them less than this four to five ounce um, chunk here. Any smaller than this, and they're gonna have trouble making anything. Um, so let's see. So anyway, I like to go ahead and cut up the clay and then you're just gonna seal each chunk that you've made into a bag. Now make sure you seal them really tightly and you don't wanna do this more than in a day in advance because it will start drying. So ideally, I would put them in Ziploc bags and then I would put those Ziploc bags into another larger Ziploc bag or a sealable container because it will start drying out. It does take several days but the, the more moisture that's in the clay, the easier it's gonna to be to work with. So once you have that, I'm gonna put away my extra clay and then start working. So let me see, I think this one was a little bit larger than you would probably give them. This is about six ounces. Um, I just really wanna be able to show you accurately um, what they would have to work with. Okay. So this is about the size clay that they would work. This is about four ounces, a little bit more. Um, and then the great thing about clay is they can make something. If they don't like it, they can smash it and start all over. So the idea is that they're going to make something that's an organic form. So you're going to remind them this is not something man-made. 
this is something that would happen in nature. So it could be, um, it could be a tree, it could be a mushroom, it could be, it can even be an animal. An animal is just fine. A lot of times they like to make animals. If you want, you could encourage them to make a pumpkin like Yayoi Kusama, who they've studied in this lesson. Uh, she has a lot of really fun um, work of pumpkins. So it's up to you. It's up to you how specific you give them guidance and then go from there. And some of them may be able to take this clay and make two things and that's fine. It's just whatever, whatever they end up making. I'm just gonna quickly give you a couple of tips that I have learned working with the air dry clay. There's just a few things that might help you be a little more successful. And I'm gonna show you some examples based on some finished things that we have. So I've got this like pumpkin that we I've made. I've got this little rabbit. This, my daughter made this. And then, and I wanna show you the difference and how we got to one result over the other. And then this one was um, a cat, but as you can see, it all fell apart when it dried. And that's kind of the trick with the air dry clay is sometimes the pieces can fall apart. So I just wanna show you how to fix that and to prevent that as much as you can. Now, with that being said, I like to let each student's art dry on its own plate or whatever, because if it does fall apart, it's no big deal, you have the pieces, grab some super glue, hot glue, push back together. <laughs> it is fixable. Um, but I just wanted to show you, and this is another one that the pieces were really small and so they just kind of fell apart. So I want to give you some tips to get to this result. So a few things, I like to give them some tools, um, toothpicks, you could do plastic forks, popsicle sticks, it might just help them to um, make their creations and then a small bowl or cup of water. And this is gonna help us uh, to get those pieces to stick together. And I'm gonna show you if I were to make another pumpkin, if, if you were having the students do the Yoyoi Kusama pumpkins, you could have them, you could show them some of these tips. So this is where it is nice to have the tools because they can um, use them to put um, indents in you know something like that so it looks like a pumpkin and I'm just doing this really quickly because I just want to show you the tips to get them to stick so then if you were going to add the stem to the pumpkin there's a couple things that will help and the first one is to kind of rough up the surface of where it's gonna stick. This kind of helps the clay to stick better. And another thing that helps is just adding a little bit of water. If they add a little bit of water, it just seems to help. And then after they've added that water, kind of use something to smooth those, um, those points where it has, you're trying to stick it together. And this is where the popsicle stick works great. Even the, the, um, the edges of the toothpick work to just kind of join the two pieces of clay together. And if they do this, they're more likely to have a result that ends up like this instead of in pieces like this. And then they can smooth it all down. Uh, another thing that the toothpicks are nice for is if they, I know this is a pumpkin, but if they were to do something else, um, they could use the toothpick to make a face. Um, if they did, you know, if they did a cat or a dog. So this is where some tools are nice, is they can add some details. And again, this is just uh, a sample and the great thing about the clay is they can always start over if they really aren't liking their result they can start all over 
So after they've dried, you can then give the students some paint. Uh, tempera paint works fine. You can use acrylic paint, whatever you, have, whatever you have access to, and let them paint their organic forms that they've made. And this is how they'll turn out. They turn out great. Uh, the trickiest part is going to be helping to transport these home. They just have to be very careful with them. They may just need to carry them home. You could always kind of pad them in some paper towels and put them in a bag and help them get them home. You just want to make sure that they're able to get them home without them falling apart. Overall, it's a really fun project. It's different than a lot of the projects that they do. Uh, just use some of the tips that I've shown you to end up with the best finished product. Uh, again, you could do the Yayoi pumpkins, Yayoi Kusama pumpkins, paint them orange and put the dots on them and you could show them pictures and just see what they come up with.